Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I've got some kitchen stuff to do. I'm not sure I'll film all of it because I think the battery's going to go on the camera soon. So I'd better get a move on, hadn't I? But um, this psychopsis needs dealing with or I'm going to lose it. I might lose it as a consequence of trying not to lose it. These do not like being mucked about with root-wise or well, they have a reputation for that. Some others have said, just get on and do it, but try and time it when there's new roots coming out. Well, I don't know whether I've got new, new roots coming out, but what I have got is a maturing new growth. So if there's gonna be any new roots, it's gonna be soon, if they're not already there. So um, this is gonna get some different treatment to a normal repot. Why? Because the last psychopsis was virtually rootless. It was in a hell of a state and I treated it in a certain way and since then it's grown roots, it's got an active root system, it's recovered and it has a new growth coming out. So why treat this one any differently when that worked? <laughs> Last time it was a guess, more of an experiment. This time it's based on what worked last time. So it has a more sound approach, shall we say. I really do not want to lose this spike because it's the only one. And boy, do they take a long time to put up a new spike. So we shall see what we can do. But the main reason for getting this out is the pot's full of algae and it will not dry down here. However, at the top of the pot where there are signs of roots that could branch or develop, it keeps getting bone dry. So that's not good. It's not the way the plant needs to be. So I need to change it. So the first thing I want to do is get it out of the pot. Don't do much until that happens. I should probably need to stake this again. That's going to be difficult. You'll see why in a minute. Right, first job, getting out of the pot. Which always makes a mess, which I can clear up after. I expect it should, it's just going to lift off, look. Well, that's good. <laughs> I haven't made a mess now, have I? There's a few bits stuck to roots. They're just going to stay there. But you can see what I mean. Um, if you look at the base of the plant, it's still got old moss there from quite a while ago. Probably when I first got it and I was reluctant to disturb it. But um, it's not flaky moss, so I'll live with it. But there are signs of white roots. Not good, but not gone. And this new growth here hasn't put any roots out yet. So I think we could be in luck here. Let's get the, the mess out of the way. Do you know, I knew that wasn't doing anything in that pot. It's not happy, is it? Well, all we can do is try. Right, treatment. First of all, hydrogen peroxide. I will clean the base of the plant up. I'm not sure it's necessary in this case. There's no sign of any bugs, things wrong. But better safe than sorry. So I'll do that. The plan, because I'll be back in a minute. I've got a shallow pot. It's wide, because as you could see, the base of that plant's quite large and the roots are coming out around the edges. So I can't have a tiny little narrow pot, that won't work, so I need a wide pot. But what I don't want is a deep pot. So I've chucked a piece of, that's a, what was a huge clay pot that cracked all down the side in the winter. So I smashed it to get some big pieces. And they're great to put inside the black pots when I'm taking one of my orchids to a show, because it stops the pot falling over. So they're heavy, yeah? But why am I using one of those? Well, let's have a think about what we're doing here. Chunky bark. How do you make a deep pot into a shallow pot? Put a load of crocking in the bottom. So that's plan one. Why did I want a big bit of clay in there? What does clay do? Absorbs water pretty damn quick. So if this bark does have a tendency to stay a bit wet. That lump of clay is gonna help that crocking dry fast. I don't need that bit wet. So that's, that's the logic of what I've got. 
Now the amount of potting media is going to be what? Inch and a half? And it's going to be sphagnum with some sponge rock. I'll get back to that. I'll just clean the base of that plant up and then we can get going. Red coffee, by the way. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon, so that's red coffee. It's not wine, it's too early in the day. It's a special type of coffee, that is. Oh. Okay, let's play. Given the base of the plant a good clean up. Um, I don't know how much moss I'm going to need. Looking at the size of the pot, that might not quite be enough. I might need some to top up around the edges. But um, we'll go with what I've got. Okay. Nice and springy. I don't want this all compacted. I've got wet hands now. Yeah. Right. I'm going to add some of this stuff in. <laughs> I'll read it out because you won't be able to read that. This is sponge rock perlite, um, endearingly known as giant perlite. Perlite is a naturally occurring mixed glassy silicate of volcanic or origin which pops when furnace. Its unique internal structure consists of nu numerous tiny closed air cells surrounded by a large exterior irregular surface. Expanded perlite is ultra lightweight, inert, sterile, permanent, incombustible, asbestos free, non toxic, rot and vermin proof, and has a neutral pH. That's good. Its extremely large open surface area allows it to retain water in mixes while maintaining air spaces important for healthy root growth. Well, get on with it then. I don't need a huge amount of this, I, I just need some dotted around. And um, in amongst this stuff are some real giant pieces which I don't really want. So I'll pick and choose. That'll do. I only need some in there. It's um, I could probably even do without. But um, I've got the stuff, and this is the sort of thing it's good for, so it'd be silly not to use it really. So we'll give it a go. Right. I do not want this compacted. This plant is going to sit on this, not in it, on it. And I want it relatively open, so I'm not compacting it, I'm leaving it loose. That's what I did with the last one. And it seemed to work. I haven't got much left, have I? So as that's a bit high, I'll take some out. I need some to go around the top of the roots and sit on them. I don't want them drying out too fast, which is what was happening before. So I'll hook a bit out. Right, let's see how that sits. I've preempted this not being able to be staked. Let's think about why. What's going to happen if I try and push a stake down the middle of that pot? What's immediately below? <laughs> a piece of solid clay pot. So the stake wouldn't go in, it would serve no purpose. All it would do was wobble around. So I'm going to skewer across the rhizome and set it down in the pot. That's my theory. Now the new growth is here. Yeah. If it's going to push out any more new growths, they're liable to be in this part of the plant rather than round here in the oldest part. But that's not always true, but it's a good start point to work from. Now what I've got to think about is where that skewer is going to go and do some good. And that's about there. As I said, I've got very few roots to play with. Those I've got are sitting on this moss. They're not in it because there aren't any hanging down. They're just sitting on it. But what I'll do is I'll put this loose moss around the base of the plant once I've got the thing secure. Now, there's my two holes. That looks like that's going to go right across between two pseudo bulbs. So I'm very wary of that spike sticking up in the air. I really do not want to lose that. Now this should press down enough to compress it against the moss. Without cutting it in half. Oh, uh, yeah. Excellent. So the plant is very secure. It's not wobbling. It was before. 
even though it had a stake, it was still wobbling, and wobbling is not conducive to good root growth. They don't like it. Right, I just want to trim that stake. So I don't keep poking myself with it, getting the heavy stuff out. That's not going to move now. So the idea now is where these roots are sitting on the top is to just very, very loosely put some moss around the base of the plant. Now, that will keep the base of the plant slightly moist, but there is so much air in loose moss like this, it's not going to rot the plant or anything silly like that. It's just to keep those roots hydrated without packing them in. Nothing more than that. Just, just loosely sitting on the top. There's even some roots around the back of the plant. So I will do the same with those. It's unlikely the back of the plant will shoot out, highly unlikely. But I've seen stranger things on Oncidium types, and this is a relative of the Oncidiums. Make sure there's plenty around the base of that. Uh, latest growth because if I'm going to get new roots that's the most likely place not guaranteed but it is the most likely place so I just want to make sure the base of that has got moss around it that's it that's all it's going to get and because that moss is soaking wet I don't need to water that in all I need to do now is keep my eye on it and watch for that moss starting to dry when it does and have a dribble of water. The wicking effect of moss is such that you don't have to wet the whole thing, you can wet part of it and it'll just soak into the rest. I don't need to stake the spike. These spikes are incredibly strong. They are capable of being broken but you'd have to be a bully to break that spike. This is incredibly woody. I mean this spike is probably three or four years old because they're perpetual bloomers the spike's been there a really long time, it's really hard and woody. So yes you can break them, but um, you'd have to be really br brutish to actually break one of those. So that's it, that's what it's going to get. And then we do that. <laughs> so I've had this plant a long time, I don't want to lose it and I love the blooms. It would be easily replaced if I lose it, but they ain't cheap got a job to buy a cheap Cycopsis because they take quite a long time to mature and bloom and you don't always get a new flower spike with every single new growth yeah doesn't always happen so um, you've got to go careful with the spikes and not lose them so that's that one done that's Cycopsis <laughs> depends where you look um, Mendenhall for me is associated with a nursery in the States. Um, it was the name of the buildings where they first started hybridization. If this Cycopsis has anything to do with that, then I would suggest the name is Cycopsis Hildos Mendenhall. But I've also seen it written Cycopsis Mendenhall Hildos. <laughs> you choose. <laughs> Right, that's it then. Thanks for watching and um, fingers crossed. Okay, I'll keep that in a lower light level for a while and we'll see what happens. As I said, I do have a new growth. It's not mature yet, hasn't swollen up at the base, but it's produced its leaf. I doubt if that will grow anymore. And it's a healthy new growth, albeit not very well supported underneath. But we'll see what we can do. We can only hope. See you next time.